Hello, welcome to Anita the Pedagogue channel. Today we continue with our literature lessons. We are looking at a poetry analysis of the poem A Wreath of Tears. Let's take a look at the objectives for today. We will look at a short biography of the poet, the title and subtitle, the structure of the poem, the analysis of the stanzas, some literary devices, themes, a quick recap, and I will introduce to you some likely examination questions. Let's take a look at the biography of the poet, Kobna Ei Akwa. He was born in Winneba in Ghana's central region. He studied at the University of Ghana Lagon and studied law at the Ghana Law School. He has worked as a lawyer and an investment counsellor. He did all this while pursuing his writing career. With a drama group known as The Living Echoes, he has directed several dramatic performances of his works. Let me take you through the title and subtitle. The title of the poem is A Wreath of Tears and it is a metaphor. Usually, when we talk about wreaths, they are made with flowers, but the wreath referred to here is compared to that made from tears. This also suggests the poem will be a sad or sorrowful poem. This poem also has a subtitle, which reveals a lot about the content of the poem. In this poem, Osofopon SB is somewhere, is the subtitle. And when we talk about Osofopon, in a can or fancy language, it refers to very reverend. Osofopon S.B. Esamwa was the president of the Methodist Church of Ghana from 1979 to 1984. It suggests that the poem is about him. The poet who wrote this poem, Kobna Eyi Akwa, is also known to be a member of the Methodist Church and he wrote this elegy in honor of Reverend S.B. Esamo. Your funeral was so quiet and small, almost too small it is said for a man your stature. You must have preferred it that way, having buried so many yourself and knowing as you did how private grief must be, how loss remains at the end personal. We would have sent flowers, but seeing how they had fallen callously into disrepute and not wanting to offend, we did not. Instead, from the garden of memory, suddenly blooming us with first rains, we plucked with care, a rose here, an ivy there, ferns, lilies, chrysanthemums, and drop by tearful drop, we wove a wreath from our personal loss. We wear it around our hearts privately. It will outlast any tombstone, and you would have preferred it that way. This poem by Kobna Eyi Akwa is a four stanza poem with 29 lines. The stanzas are uneven. If you look at the lengths, some are short and some are quite long, and the lines are not punctuated. There's also enjambment as the ideas in the lines run into each other, so you need to not only say a line and pause but continue to be able to get the full understanding. The poet also uses freestyle and the ends of the lines do not rhyme. When we talk about a wreath, a wreath is made of flowers just like what we see here. The structure of the poem. The poem has four stanzas and 29 lines. It is a free verse poem. It does not have a regular pattern because free verse poems do not have a regular pattern. 
the lines in the poem do not have end rhymes and are uneven. Also, the lines are not punctuated. The diction used the uh, choice of words is simple English language and it is easy to understand. However, some vocabulary in the poem suggests the poem is a sad or sorrowful poem. When you look at words like funeral, tearful drop, um, tombstone, personal loss, all this tells you that um, it is a sad poem where it's about death. Let's look at the analysis for stanza 1 and 2. The persona's funeral was so quiet and small, almost too small for a man of his stature. As we see in lines 1 to 3, we learn that his funeral was expected to be big due to his social status or position in life. In lines 5 and 6, we learn that he must have preferred it that way and this gives the impression that he must have been a very humble man who did not want a very expensive extravagant funeral. Also addressing the dead person with a second person narrative, you, subtly suggests that death still exists somewhere as people believe in life after death. We can understand from line 7, having buried so many yourself, that the person being addressed in this poem officiates funeral celebrations and we can confirm from the subtitle that this elegy is to a pastor of a church as the word osophopon in Akan means a very reverend or a big pastor. Still from stanza 1 and 2, lines 9 to 11 explain that he understands, the person understands the concept of grief and mourning due to his experience as a pastor or a senior pastor. Most importantly, how the grieving and mourning process is personal and not joint. After all, the speaker believes the person knew how private grief must B. How loss remains at the end personal. Explaining further that when there is a funeral, the pain is not communal. Each and every person has its own way of grieving. For stanza 3, wreaths are normally placed on caskets during funerals, but this didn't happen. In the case of this persona, an argument must have arisen about sending wreaths. It is common to have families to decide whether they want anybody to send wreaths for a funeral or not. This is due to the expression not wanting to offend. Therefore, if the wreaths have been sent, it would have offended some people, perhaps the family. The tone in this line indicates regret and criticism of the reason behind the refusal to send wreaths. We would have sent flowers, but seeing how they had fallen and this differentiate between we and they means some people wanted to send flowers or wreaths, but at the end of the day they couldn't send it. And this clearly shows how the mourners had differences, in particular the lines how they had fallen callously in disrepute. And this suggests that the decision about sending flowers had issues. In stanza 4, the mourners went into the past to gather their memory of Osofpon S.B. Isamoa. This is metaphorical to the garden of memory. The flowers indicated here shows how they searched themselves to find the various deep memories they had of him. This process was especially painful for the mourners as they did it tearfully. From the title, a wreath of tears that will outlast any tombstone as we see in line 27. Flowers will fade, tombstones will crack and disintegrate, 
but what is kept in the heart will affect the individual mourners personally and stay with them forever and so the the read that they've made with their tears will outlast any tombstone the final line of the poem suggests that Osof Kwon SV is someone would have preferred the funeral just the way it was celebrated and it was celebrated quiet and small. And this brings us to the end of our stanza by stanza analysis. Now let's take a look at some literary devices. Metaphor from the garden of memory the garden referred to it's not a garden where flowers grow but memory or experience this therefore creates a metaphor we pluck with care a rose here an ivy there ferns lilies chrysanthemums these are not flowers but various kinds of sorrowful emotions and memories in place of flowers memory is of the mind and garden is of the ground but the speaker uses one in place of the other. We see a lot of imagery, the use of the flowers. We plug with care a rose here, an ivy there, fence, lilies, chrysanthemums. This creates a colorful picture in the reader's mind of something pleasant in the midst of something unpleasant. Refrain is like curls, as in verse or catchphrase, such as you would have preferred it that way we see that in line five and six would have preferred it that way lines five six twenty eight and twenty there's also the use of alliteration the repetition of initial consonant sounds we see that in lines 23 and 24 we wove a wreath and also in line 25 we were the consonant w has been repeated Let's take a look at some themes from the poem A Wreath of Tears. 1. Grief resulting from loss is personal despite the togetherness or solidarity people show when there are crises. So from the poem we realize that the grieving process is usually very private. This shows that people's support during funerals does not guarantee that the close relations will not grieve and that in the moment of mourning, people will feel grief personally, not communally, depending on how each person related with the departed. The loss associated with death in a family and the effects on individual members of the family cannot be overemphasized. Also, too, even during mourning, there can be disagreements, making people hold grudges, people have different opinions, and take sides. During funerals, there can be petty disagreements, such as whether to lay wreaths or not. In spite of how sudden funerals are expected to be, there can be misunderstandings and conflicts. The nature and cause of funerals celebrated and the repercussions of such funerals. So we realize that Osofpon SB is someone wanted his funeral to be so quiet and small. Some funerals can be big and extravagant while others are simple and small. And so that is also highlighted in this poem to show that some people usually wants very extravagant and big funerals whilst others just want something simple and small. Here are some likely examination questions that you might encounter. You can try your hands on them to see how best you've understood the poem A Wreath of Tears. So a quick recap, we've taken a look at the title, A Wreath of Tears, and its subtitle, the structure of the poem, it has four stanzas and 29 lines, the diction is simple English language, it has a very sorrowful tone, we've looked at some literary devices in the poem, and some themes, 
There are also other lessons from Anita the Pedagogue channel that you can take a look at at your free time. I hope this lesson was useful to you. Please put in your comments and questions and I'll respond to them. Do like, share and subscribe to this channel. Until I come your way again, keep learning and be the best version of yourself.